Good morning everyone, Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. Hope you guys are doing well. Better days ahead. Almost zero wind today as we head on into Colorado. But first, one last stop in Kansas to go look at that thing out in the distance. Thanks for joining me everyone. I will be uploading this video with some Nomad internet and you'll find a link below in the video description how I upload all these videos on the road as a Nomad. Here in Goodland, Kansas, we have the world's largest easel. <laughs> all you artists out there, this is pretty funny. It is freaking huge everybody. And if you look closely, it almost looks like it's acrylic paint actually on the canvas right now. Like that, that's an original piece. We're only 17 miles from the Colorado state line. When I think of Colorado, snow doesn't really come to mind, but these trees, this just has that Colorado feel. Um, this random pine cone seems really inappropriate. Anyways, I'm not a tree expert, but I do believe this is some kind of a, a pine tree here. All right. World's largest easel. Got it. Yes, today is going to be a good day. It's also 12 degrees. I was going to say cooler, uh, less hot than all these heat wave days. So Colorado is going to be a beautiful arrival today. I do need to make one pit stop here at the Walmart in Goodland, get my supplies, food, important stuff like that and then I'll be able to boondock for another week well 10 days if I really want to so I'll get back to you uh, once we get on closer to Colorado holy cow it is so much easier to drive without that wind this is glorious 65 mile an hour steering wheel straight the difference a couple days can make right <laughs> all right we're eight miles from Colorado now all right, I'm gonna put my blinker on here because on the other side of this bridge, and I will say this, most states don't have something like this off of an interstate where you can pull off and actually take a picture in front of the welcome to our state sign. But Colorado's just a very special place and I love it. So let me go get my picture in front of this sign right here. So yeah, just about 45 days ago, I got Frida from Colorado. Yep, made the trip here in the smart car, towed the smart car back behind the RV. Uh, we're gonna be going to Denver because I said in my video that I would come back and spend more time in Denver. And getting Frida ready for the road was a total success. It's been an awesome, crazy, busy 45 days, but I'm gonna celebrate a little bit. It's good to be back in Colorado. I love this state and we've got 175 miles to go to get to Denver. I have a boondocking place through Harvest Hosts. So I will let you know more about that when we get there. I'm gonna open up the trailer, tighten up those straps. Actually, there's a little bonus there. I did not need to tighten anything. My straps all stayed tightened. I did tighten them a little more this time than I usually do. And I'm still gonna check every single 50 miles. I'll just park and go check the straps. <laughs> Can be a tough place to get back on the highway, but I'm in no rush. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be patient here. There's my turn. There's my turn. I'm not even gonna turn my four ways on. So when people do approach, they know I've just entered the interstate again. Okay, Colorado, man. Uh-oh, roads got bumpy. Yeah, we're gonna check those straps here in about 50 miles. Oh, okay, I remember this. I remember this. Oh, Colorado. Oh, jeez. All right, well, we are getting close to Denver now. You see off in the distance, there's some snow-covered mountains over there. That's the Rockies. That's for a future video, though. We're not going through those today. I've still got to get through downtown Denver and get parked at my spot, so 
let me deal with all that and I'll get back to you when we get to our harvest host for the evening. So overall, we pretty much skipped all of Denver and Denver's traffic. Uh, we're in a city just north of Denver, North Glen, Colorado, far enough away from the city where I feel comfortable. I can take the bike in and explore a little bit more. Coming up here on our left, apparently, is, uh, well, you guys know I love my Harvest Host locations. I've been to a lot. I don't know how this one fits in because it's not a farm. It's not a brewery, it's not a winery, it's not a golf course, and it's not an attraction. It's a church. Yeah. I. As soon as I find out more, I will find out how this place, right here on the corner, uh, is a harvest house. I have somebody waiting to check me in and show me exactly where to park, because otherwise, well, they're gonna have some services and stuff, and I just wanna make sure that I'm in the right spot. So, oh, big ditch right there, but we're okay. So I will stage here, give them a little ring-a-ling, and see where I'm supposed to go. Really friendly staff here at this church. Um, apparently churches are allowed to uh, join Harvest Hosts and host, this place will host up to two RVs at a time. They have this spot and they also have this spot up here. But I will just warn you, they're both unlevel. You're gonna need leveling jacks or you're gonna need manual leveling jacks. That's okay. <laughs> I had done this for eight years before getting Miranda. You, you drive up onto the manual leveling jacks and I've got two of them for the dualies. I always recommend and tell people, you're gonna want to use two back there. Even though some people might say, you'll get away with one. You're putting a lot of stress on that one wheel and that one PSI in there. It's not designed for that. So just, I always travel with three. I don't think you'll need more than three, but three seems to work. The RV is level, the trailer is not, and that's okay. I'm gonna unload Black Betty and uh, we're gonna go play in Denver. tells me we are definitely going to be getting at least one magnet today in Denver? Probably. I don't know a whole lot about this candy factory. It's a really cool little panel van, delivery van. Let's go check it out. All right, checked in for my tour. Look, I got a bunch of these jumbo peppermint candy canes. 50 cents. All right, so the tour starts here in about five minutes. I'm gonna go check out the store here real quick before the tour starts. Yep, we're gonna find out how they make all these chocolates here. Just a moment. Hammonds from Denver, Colorado. Look at all those jelly bellies. Mmm. Ooh, margarita. Hmm. All right, they got normal stuff like nerds. And then they have a candy pizza. Um, a gummy burger there. A gummy hot dog. And noodles. <laughs> I know a lot of people collect stickers, so those are cool. They do have a bunch of stickers, and I'm hoping if we spin this enough, I'm gonna find their magnets. I'm gonna find their magnets. There they are. Okay, let me pick. I do like this one because it's got the Volkswagen camper. 
but it's a huge magnet and I think this one's better because it shows the mountains, look at the Rockies, and then a little campfire. And it says Hammond's Candy, so that's the one I'm gonna go with. So I went on my tour and of course they were making candy while we were having our tour. Can you tell what they're doing? That's right, candy canes. They are stretching out the candy cane material, cutting it, shaping it into a candy cane, all done by hand. It is incredible. That's one of the great things about these tours is they do them every half hour, but they're always doing something behind the scenes. It's not like those other tours where you show up and they're randomly just closed and they're just telling you. Like we actually got to see them making chocolate candy bars here. And at the next station, they were making some kind of a pudding treat and they sell all their stuff to a lot of big retailers like Target and Trader Joe's and Okay, here they are uh, hand cutting them to make sure that every single candy cane is the exact same length. It's like quality control. It's, just, it's incredible that it's all done by hand. The packaging room next door right here, here's where they're putting the saran wrap around them and the sticker. And one of the neat things that I found out about all the candies is they last forever. There is no expiration on hard candy. So they, they make their candy for Christmas year round and all their candy. It's just a never ending process and it keeps their employees busy the entire year. That was a fun tour and I learned a lot. On the way out, we all got an oops. These are the ones that had probably, they either broke or they melted or something happened in production that, that they didn't like. So after your free tour, you get one of these, a free tour here and they do them every half hour. So that's cool. Let's uh, get on Black Betty and uh, explore more of the Denver area. Uh, we're gonna go back and take a look. I think I have some lunch plans now and I'm really excited about, it. but first, this funny motel. Been around since the 1950s with neon. But as you can see, they're calling it Big Bunny Motel. But if you look at the neon really carefully, the I used to be a U and after the G used to be an S. Yeah, they called this Bugs Bunny Motel. And it didn't take long for Universal to write them a letter from their attorneys and say, you better change that real quick. So, little quick change, no more Bugs Bunny, but Big Bunny Motel. Right. Well, poop. <laughs> Where's all my South Park peeps? Casa Bonita, Casa Bonita. Wow, Casa Bonita! Woo -hoo! What's Casa Bonita? Dude, haven't you ever been there? It's a big Mexican restaurant, but they have like cliff jumpers and Black Bart's Cave and all kinds of stuff. It's like the Disneyland of Mexican restaurants. This Saturday, awesome! Casa Bonita, Casa Bonita. Food and fun and a festive atmosphere, Casa Bonita. Who said I'm inviting you? Yep, made famous by South Park, Casa Bonita, here in Denver, Colorado. You have no idea how much I have wanted to visit this place. And uh, unfortunately, I have some sad news, everyone. Casa Bonita did not survive COVID. It's not the end, uh, but during COVID, uh, they had to file for bankruptcy and they went up for sale. Well, guess what? Somebody bought Casa Bonita. None other than the creators of South Park, Trey Parker and Matt Stone. They are the new owners and it is rumored that they have been inside remodeling this place to eventually one day reopen to the public just as it was before. However, with any story like that that sounds exciting, there are just as many other stories that say nothing has happened here since they took over. Not one person has entered or exited this and they haven't done anything. So, it's hard to tell really what's going on. However, there is one indication and that is under new management. And this has been changed uh, since Trey and Matt took over ownership. Um, so possibly one day these doors will open again to the public. And you know I will be back because this is definitely something I wanna see. Oh, and then there's this plaque as well. We feature live entertainment. Look at the painted on artwork here. Cliff divers, gunfighters, amazing magician, dancing monkeys, the puppet show, and the strolling musicians. Man. So we will have to find another place to eat in Denver today. That's okay. I'm sure we can find something, right? We'll be back. Be back. All right, we're not eating here. 
this is a key bank now. But once upon a time, this corner right here, this random corner in Denver, Colorado, claims to be the founder. Read this. And if we go over here to the corner, there's a small little granite pillar here that says something. On this site, 1935, Lewis Ballas created the cheeseburger. The cheeseburger, guys. His restaurant, the Humpty Dumpty Barrel Drive-In, was Colorado's first drive-in. And there's one of the logos from Humpty Dumpty with the root beer keg there. And, uh, wait a minute. The cheeseburger was trademarked and registered by Ballas on March 5th, 1935 trademarked along my travels a lot of places have claimed to be the first people to ever serve a cheeseburger or hot dog hot dogs another hot hot debate about where the hot dog actually came from but i don't think you can argue with a government registered trademark on the cheeseburger right where i'm standing right here so it has to be true right unfortunately no cheeseburgers here at key bank so we'll keep looking all right, I think I trust this place, guys, because they got designated motorcycle parking. Heck yeah. So what do we have here? Davies Chuck Wagon Diner. Look at that neon sign there, guys. Been around since, since the 1950s. They gotta have a good burger here. Oh, I love it. It even has that 50s diner feel with all the stainless steel outside. Don't know what the horse signifies on top, but I like it. Let's try it out. It's a little cramped in here. The kitchen's right there. Wow, this is really neat though. All right, it was a little too claustrophobic inside. So I got an outdoor table here. Here's their menu. Been around for quite a while. And uh, I guess they're famous for their burger. Not the very first cheeseburger, but um, mm, we'll go for it. We'll try it. Man, they've got quick service here. Look at that burger. burger was stupid delicious <laughs> one of the few places where you go at a you eat a, a hamburger and they say how would you like that cooked <laughs> you don't have that option at mcdonald's <laughs> and if you're wondering i got mine medium well which is this has been a change this last year everything steak anything that needs to be cooked to a certain temperature i had always my entire life been well done these days everything's medium well I'm okay with a little bit of pink. Yeah. This transit, yeah, transit center, okay. Has boats with legs. That's what they went with. A landlocked city, Denver, Colorado. Their transit center has boats walking. Why? I, I couldn't really tell you. Uh, I guess I would call it art. Is that, is that art, guys? Boats that are walking around? Art, yeah. I need to get back, check in on those kitties there at uh, the Harvest Host. So I'm gonna call her a day here in Denver, but I'm not done with Denver, guys. I have some more plans in Denver after this video. But for right now, I wanna ride back. Check on the cats. All right, just got back to the RV. It's about 76 degrees outside, but sunny. And we got the AC blowing cold up there on low with, look at this, maintaining 100%. We are actually positive watts from the solar on the roof while running the air conditioner off solar, not even touching the batteries. There's the other display, 100% healthy. Opie, I missed your face, man. I missed your face. Yeah, you wanna hang out tonight with Dada? Yeah. There's a Terra girl. Getting your stretches on? Where are you going? Straight to the food bowl? Yeah, you just couldn't help yourself? Opie thinks you have like magic powers or something because you always get what you want. If you want a spoonful of treats, you get a spoonful of treats. Hence, Opie gets a spoonful of treats too. So he thinks you're like magical with magic powers. Yeah, that's funny, huh? Well, guys, I'm going to enjoy the rest of the late afternoon and evening, but don't, don't forget, we're going to do more Denver in my very next video. And I'm really excited about it. I got my tickets. 
I'll see you guys in a few days. Bye guys.